Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I am Brett Papa, and today's lesson is about tying it all together. You got scales, chords, transitions up and down the neck, how to tie them all together. Maybe a little like, you know, chromatic pizzazz just in there, just for fun. If you are new, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified. And don't forget to check the links down below in the description box. There is a link to brettpapa.com where I got courses on all this kind of stuff and the membership, which is all of my stuff, plus the unreleased stuff like the new mixing major and minor pentatonic course and the Hendrix course, lots of stuff. So check that out. It funds everything here, all the guests as well. So anyways, how do we tie it all together? Well, let's take, let's take major pentatonic, right? I think a lot of people struggle more with major than minor. You have to be like super, you have to really pay attention to being melodic and major pentatonic. So nice one to start with is A major, all right? Okay, so how do you start to be able to do that? Well, step one is kind of a tie, right? So this could be one and two or flip-flop these two. But I would say knowing the scale is the obvious, right? So if you don't know how to find a major pentatonic scale, go to the root, right? So an A in this case. And then go down three steps. If you want to find that common like position one shape like this, just go down three steps and do that same pattern. Now, what I would suggest if you're going to do it that and think of it that way, Start with the root note so you start to understand the sound of the scale because how I just showed you is really more F minor, F sharp minor, I should say, is more of that sound because you're starting there. So what I would suggest is start with the root, which is A. And it's going to take on more of that major sound. Okay, that's one way that you can find, you know, the pentatonic shape. Or if you're thinking about chords and you're like, okay, here, again, this root on the low E. And you think about this chord shape, just know that position two, or shape two as I like to call it, is right underneath your fingers. Okay, so the shape part of it and the chord part of it together, that's where everything starts to happen, right? Because if you notice when I did this chord right here, right, and then I played. If you just look at those two things, well, you notice in that chord, the really important notes are the tones of the chord. Now, those are the ones that you want to target inside that scale, right? If you're playing over that particular chord, right? I'm just going to use all of the examples as if I'm wanting to resolve to an A chord. Now, this really comes into play when you start adding the other chords and you realize that you can do this with every chord in your progression. And that's how you hit, you know, target notes or chord tones or whatever you want to call them. That's how you do this, right? But if you want to just start by taking, let's say, position two, right underneath this E shape of the chord, right? Start by phrasing out of those. Right? I'm sliding in on the third of the chord, fifth of the chord and then back to the root. Now I just played all of the notes in that chord by using a pentatonic shape. Now that's how it becomes musical. You don't just sound musical by playing a chord shape. 
you want to really make sure that you're paying attention to the notes that you're playing over, right? That's the most important thing because that's what gets you to the melody, right? So, even noticing when you do bends, are you bending into another chord tone when you want to do a bend? Bends are such a cool way to add emotion to our playing, but you want to make sure when you decide to bend that the bend is purposeful. It's not just some random like note, like I'm going to bend this note and it's going to be awesome. Well, that does not always work. Okay. So if I'm in this shape two of my pentatonic, A major pentatonic, again, thinking about we're trying to resolve to the tones of an A major chord, right? Well, that note that I just bent to, that sounds good, but why? Right? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Why does the note sound good? Because there's another shape of an A chord right here, and it's the D shape. Right? It looks just like a D chord, but I'm bending into that note. Now, in this instance, right up here, I had the root. Now, when I bend this note, I'm bending into the third. Another thing that you can do, right, is I always say, make sure you check your octaves because a lot of people, you know, you learn like the cage system, which I am the hugest proponent of, of all time. It has it been the key for me to understanding the fretboard. Highly suggest you check that out. I have a whole course on it. I also have a ton of free videos here on it as well on my channel. Just go to my channel, type in cage system, you'll see it. But another quick way to do that, it's still learning shapes and stuff all over the fretboard just check the octaves, right? So if I know if here's the third of my A chord, then here is the higher octave, which is also a third. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Now, it sounds good when I bend here because I'm essentially bending to one of the most powerful notes in a chord, right? The root is always home base. It's like, yes, that's gonna sound good no matter what, and it's going to sound good if we're in A major or A minor. The A note is safe in both scales, right? The third is a super powerful note because that makes the chord major or minor, right? And in this case, it's major. So you're bending into that major third. That's like, boom, we are in A major, okay? Now, the fifth is, if you think of the five chord in like a one, four, five, the fifth's kind of open-ended. It's a cool, cool sound, right? Like I could play an A chord and just hang there and, it's, and it sounds good, but it kind of sounds like it wants to go somewhere, right? Versus that like, oh yeah, that's home for sure. Now listen to the third. It's like, oh, that's an important note. Okay, so if we're learning right now, I would suggest learn all five shapes, right? You got very important, right? That's shape one. Here's shape two. Shape two, shape three. Shape three, shape four would be. Notice I'm always going back to resolve to the root, okay? So you get the sound of what we're doing here. And then the last and final one. Okay, so again. Right? 
Okay, so those are all five of the positions. Now the key is knowing where those chords are inside those shapes. So position one. <laughs> You would have either the A shape, right? Think of your A chord. Or if you're a proponent of the cage system, this G shape is a great way to think about this because it really hammers in. Cool thing about the G shape is it teaches you more of how to arpeggiate position one. Right? Coming in with the G shape and resolving to the A shape. Right. Now, the next step would be how to transition from one shape to the next shape. Okay, so if I think, going back to the cage system, if we had A, the next shape is G. Right, and that basically works in position one. The next shape would be the E shape in position two. So what you can do is tie those together. Now let's just take, you know, the G, B, and E strings of our E shape right here. You guys are probably all familiar with this triad. Okay, so. All chord tone. Here, 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 and then bending into here, right? We can do the old faithful classic Southern rock band. Why does that work? Bending into the third, hitting the fifth. Two notes of the chord. All of the notes of the chord. Third, fifth, third, root, root. Okay? One way to do it. Now you don't have to take this whole shape. You could be like, Okay, so sliding in, chord tune, third, fifth, root. Back to the fifth, third, fifth. All chord tones. Fifth. Root. Sliding into the third. Fifth. Root. Okay, now, so think about that. If you're here, sliding down a whole step and a pull off gets you to here, okay? So think about that in that position too. Know that that triad's there. Now the cool thing about this, <laughs> is there's also, know your pentatonic shapes because, and I say shapes, because underneath chord shapes like this, those pentatonic positions are always gonna be there, okay? So, if you played a one chord, a four chord, and a five chord, <laughs> like this, Underneath this shape of a chord is always gonna be this pentatonic shape. <laughs> 
That's a huge soloing hack, right? You're like, wait a second, what? So you can take, anytime you see this big chord that looks like this, that pentatonic shape too is gonna be underneath your fingers. And if you start to think about it that way, you're gonna start to see really how to uh, play the modes, right? Because you can take the pentatonic framework and then you drop those other notes of the chord shapes themselves inside the pentatonics. And you're like, what are these other notes? Those are the other notes, the other two notes, right? You got five in a pentatonic scale. But if you can see all these chord shapes and what pentatonic shapes fit around a chord, then you fill in all those gaps, right? So suddenly you understand all like, oh, this is why it's Mixolydian. Ah, this is why it's Dorian. I see, right? So that's a mode hack, but that's another lesson altogether. Back to what we were talking about, transitioning from shape to shape or chord, chord tone to chord tone. Right, so we're going from shape one to two. What about, um, you know, this shape? The D shape. Okay, now position three. Oops, sorry. And position four. Share those notes. So I, I like to think of this. The root is actually in position three if you talk about the D shape. Okay. But all the killer notes other than the root note are also in position four. Now you could think of this shape as the C shape. Again, when I look at the cage system where these two things intertwine um, in an important way, like where, what I'm saying, like where that could be seen as the A shape or part of the G shape, just like this could be seen as part of the D shape or the C shape. In position one, I like to think of the A shape as the meat and potatoes, pentatonic playing. Pentatonic playing. If I want to start to interject arpeggios, I like to think of the G shape. So if I want to play from more of a melodic arpeggio kind of way, I'll take the G shape, right? And think about that. Much the same way as the D shape and the C shape, right? Whereas I'll think of position three where the D shape is, is more of the transition like pentatonic. Now, why did all those notes work, right? So position three is super important in major or minor because it's a perfect transition spot because look at our chord. Look at those notes right there, okay? Underneath my fingers. So when I slide from position three, all whole steps, when I go, and resolve to that note. Okay, check this out. I've slid into my third. Right? Remember, think of those octaves. So, slid into my third. Now I'm hitting the fifth, and when I go, I'm hitting the root. Now when I slide up into this position four where I'm gonna do this D shape, when I just went. Now, right, if I look at this. There's my third. There's my fifth, okay? So check that out, cool lick. Or you could be if you want a more resolve, right? This would be a cool way to get into a lick. 
where if I did that same approach, but hit and ended on the root, it's more of like a resolution, like. <laughs> Okay, so. Right? Chord tones. Part of that D shape. Root. Fifth. That sound great. Now, when you see the A shape, right? So back to position one, a lot of times I come in thinking of the G shape. When I wanna think of this A shape, right? And keep in mind, when you play power chords like this from the A string down, with A is the, you know, the A string is the root, these are A shape chords, right? You still have that same shape. So what I'm about to tell you is underneath your fingers here is that position five. So it's a really cool. Position to slide down with. Right, if I did that lick. You know, oftentimes you wouldn't think, okay, well, this is the A chord. Well, don't forget, if you do the whole shape, you have that E string right there, right? So, which in this case is the fifth of our chord, right? So you got fifth, third, root, fifth. Again, octaves, right? So when you do this lick, Killer bending lick, right? You're bending into the third and you're hitting the fifth. Back to the root. All right. Now, when I did that, right? A bunch of jibba jabba noodling. <laughs> auctioneering, those are auctioneering licks as I like to call them. Sold to the pentatonic player with the gold top. Okay, so the way I was able to do that is A, I can mix major and minor together. Now again, like I said, membership has the major and minor course already in progress. It's gonna be freaking massive. <laughs> like. Why do I do this? Why do I make 12 hour courses? It's gonna be freaking huge, okay? So if you like ma mixing major and minor, check the link down below. Okay, so I'm able to mix those scales together shape-wise, but the reason it works, again, is because I can see these. So when I put a minor, I can still see those major chord shapes. Now that gets to be kind of crazy, right? That's a lot of stuff. And again, you know, it's all broken down how to do that. And I do that in here too, as well. But let's just do some simple things, right? Simple ways to spice up the major stuff we just learned, okay? And the easy way to do that is to fill in the gaps. What do I mean by that? So if we have that, right? So playing out of this A shape, this is position five, down to position four, where I'm gonna hit this D shape, okay? Fill in these gaps. So when you're walking down from the third to the root, and then whole step. Now it doesn't just have to be like this. It can be, right? <laughs> See, 
see how simple that was? But it made it super cool. And all I'm doing is just filling in and coming at it from different ways. You're sliding into a note that really does work from a half step below. Into the third. To the fifth. Walking down. Right? And then... So that's the other way to do it. So a half step down. Right, you can do that in a lot of places. Remember I said the octaves, so. Again, third to octave, or third to root, I should say. Did the same trick all the way down. Third. Root. Gonna do it again. Now I... You can do that here too, right? I just slid into that note, right? If you don't hang on the note for too long, you don't resolve to that note, the ear's like, wait a second, what was that? It like almost snaps you awake from predictive lick noodling to something that's like a little bit ear twisting. I was like, oh, wait a second, hold on a minute. What's going on here? And it starts to get you to pay attention again, right? So, you can do that here, right? There's that same thing. Third. Now, what I was doing there is I start to pay attention to these notes still. So I got. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix in the minor pentatonic. So you can get. So maybe like a. Uh... Right, it doesn't have to be a note, you can bend to it. So I bent into minor, back into major. That's a minor note, major note. Bend from minor to major. Resolve in major. And then you just start to mix all that stuff together. But the rules that I've showed you, right? Know the scale, know where the chord tones are, right? Cage system works great for that. But then you start to fill in those gaps, right? Which is not rocket science. It's just like, use your ear. Don't sit on the in-between notes. Just graze past them, right? So that adds another level of, you know, something interesting. It's like another color, right? You got a palette, you got red, you got, you know, blue, yellow, whatever. And you're like, well, I want to make green. Okay, well, think of 
blue and yellow coming together to give you that cool green note. Now, if you land on the green note, it could make you and your ear wanna barf. <laughs> so green could be vomit if you stay on that note, but it's just a little splash to get back to, you know, green. And then suddenly it's a big sea of blue with touches of green and it's like, oh, that looks like an ocean. I, even had, I haven't even had a lot of coffee this morning and it's just like, la la la. <laughs> Anyways, that I guarantee you, if you practice that and the stuff that's in this video and pick a chord to resolve to, right? So if you're gonna play over this stuff, like just resolve to the, 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 the one, right? The root chord, A, pick A major, and in each one of those pentatonic shapes, find the notes of the A chord and target those notes. There's only three notes in the chord, right? So it's not too hard. There's only five notes in a pentatonic scale. So right off the bat, <laughs> there's a lot of possibilities, right? So find those notes. Once you find them in one spot and you work your way around that scale shape to where you're resolving to chord tones, then take it from one shape to another shape, right? Forwards and backwards, get that down, right? So maybe it's just something as simple as. Very basic lick. Hit two A's. Right, third, pull off the root, pull off the root. Fifth, root. Okay. All resolving to chord tones, okay? And then try to fill in those little gaps. So maybe you don't want to just make it sound super predictable and you want to be like. So I'm going to add a little. See, that's the, that's the barf note. Uh, don't want to land on it. So. Hit three barf notes. But since I didn't stay there, they work, right? So don't be afraid of those notes either. A lot of that like super cool 80s blues based pentatonic stuff where you're like, God, what scale are they playing? They're filling in the dots of a pentatonic scale. So they get those three note per string runs. You know who does this a lot? Richie Sambora, killer guitar player, right? Really concentrates on making something melodic that really fits over the chords, like part one of the lesson, and then for the speed and the finesse, you can fill in all those. All those other notes. And it gives you an opportunity to play three notes in a row, which can really build up the speed quick. So that's kind of a cheat way to rip through pentatonic scales as well. But like I said, work on that stuff. It's super important. And you'll be shocked if you do that daily how much more melodic your phrasing will become. Now that's step one. Step two would be to go from like the one chord to a four chord, right? And see how you can take those licks from the first chord and then move them into the next chord, right? So A to D. So my A, one. Right? 
right? I'm hitting the third. All right, all D notes. Back to one. Right? as easy as that boys and girls again like i said if you're new here welcome big hug it's awesome to have you here don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified for the latest videos i start posting stuff all the time there's also tons of interviews of all sorts of world-class players so check out the main channel and if you want to support the whole thing we got here brettpapa.com is what funds all of this stuff including bringing in all the world-class amazing teachers. This year's gonna be sick. Got some legit people coming in to make courses. Not that there's already isn't, right? We got Tim Pierce and Corey Congelio and Jeff McElane and Robbie Calvo. And I got four other people coming in that are just like, yes. But that's to be continued. But that's all brought to you by brettpapa.com. Check out the membership. Like I said, if you are into this sort of thing, there's a caged course. And also in the membership, you get all my courses, but there is that mega mixing and major minor pentatonic course that is in the works, but you already get access to what I've done. And there's that Hendrix course everyone's been waiting for for like two years, like 30 videos of that one's already in there too. So check that out. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the continued support. We'll catch you next time.